Anyone remember the Adidas PrimeNet FS? I can't believe those didn't happen. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you four product ideas that I have for Adidas using existing technologies within the brand. That was a double elbow crack. If you guys end up enjoying this video and perhaps want to see this turn into a series on the channel, don't forget to support this one with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time and you enjoy what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. Now I've been working in this industry for the better part of about five or six years now, essentially trying absolutely everything from boots to balls to shin guards to apparel, you name it, I've tried it. So I'm really familiar with each individual brand, the products they have on offer, the evolution of their products over the years, and all of their individual technologies. And given that I've tried absolutely everything, there are certain things, because I'm reviewing them, that I would improve or even just add to their product lineup. So these are four ideas that I have that I think Adidas would do really, really well with if they chose to make it one day. And if they do end up making it, let me know because I want to cut. Will any of these ideas actually happen? That I'm not really sure, but I'd be really curious to hear your opinions on some of these ideas down below in the comments. With that being said, let's get right into it. Boost shin guards. Now, in my opinion, out of all the ideas I'm about to tell you, I think this one has the best chance of doing extremely well. If they were able to produce a boost backed shin guard with a retail price of $40 or less, I think that these could absolutely explode in popularity. Now, for those that don't know what Adidas Boost is, it's very popular amongst their sneakers, basketball shoes, training models. We've seen it trickle into the soccer industry. It was on the A17 Plus Pure Control, now the Predator 18 Plus. Honestly, not that big of a factor in a soccer cleat type implementation, at least in terms of what we've seen so far, but very, very popular and well known in the sneaker industry. And there's just a lot of hype around this material. When Adidas releases a brand new shoe featuring their boost technology, people get pumped up. So for a shin guard application, given the bouncy and I guess resilient properties of this type of material that makes it so comfortable to wear on your feet, wouldn't that make an excellent backing material for a shin guard in my opinion yes it would now the reason why a boost shin guard i think would do so well is not necessarily just because of the protective qualities that it could have on offer obviously you want your shin guards to be as protective as possible and i assume boost would do the job pretty well as a backing material if you paired it with a decent shell but the reason why i think boost would do so well is more so based around the hype it would generate people get really excited with new boost products and if you were to introduce a shin guard the first one ever to feature their boost technology technology or boost material, people would get pumped up about that as long as it wasn't too expensive, which is why I started this with saying that it would have to be $40 or less, because I feel like 40 bucks is about the maximum of what a large number of shin guard consumers would be willing to pay. You go over 40 bucks, people are just going to think that it's too expensive and they're not going to buy, which we've seen proven many times by Nike, especially they had the mercurial blade carbon fiber shin guard, they had the Flylight shin guards with the hollow design, not a very good product by the way, and they're introducing something new in the fall that's supposed to grip your socks. Those look pretty cool, haven't tried them yet, but I'm sure they're going to be more than $40, which more than likely is not going to make them the most successful product in the world. Even the C6 Agility Carbon Fiber Shin Guards that I've talked about many times on this channel, excellent product. I really feel like it's the best shin guard ever made, but they're 130, 140 bucks. People are not willing to pay that. They don't want to buy expensive shin guards, but for $40 or less, with the boost material, as long as you gave it a solid shell that offered decent protection and made them look pretty cool with the exposed boost on the back, people would get very excited about that and I think it would sell extremely well. Now, as great as this product sounds, there are two obstacles that I see for Adidas. The first being that I'm not sure what the production cost would actually be to produce a boost shin guard. I'm not sure if they'd be able to come in at that $40 retail price. I assume they'd be able to, but at this point in time, they have more or less kind of maintained Boost as a more premium element or premium technology within the Adidas brand. So even if they could do it for $40, 
it's possible that they wouldn't want to make a boost product that inexpensive because they'd want to keep it as more of like an elite technology within the brand. The second issue that I see is that boost as a material is not particularly light, at least not as light as a regular foam that you'd normally find backing a pair of shin guards. So it's possible that if the boost was on the thicker side that the shin guard wouldn't be super light. I think they could make it thin enough to where the weight would not be an issue. But again, if they could come in at $40 and make a cool looking shin guard with a boost backing, I think it would do extremely well. Bring back the old style Predator models at a lower price, but without killing the new modern Predators. Now this is the Predator 18.1. They also make it in the Laceless Predator 18 Plus variation. And if you're familiar with the Adidas lineup over the years, this kind of just took over for the Ace line. They just rebranded it as a Predator. Does this relate to older Predators that had the kangaroo leather upper, the rubber striking element, the fold over flap tongue, the older bladed stud pattern? No, there's pretty much nothing in common with those whatsoever aside from the name. However, these have done extremely well with the younger generation that is buying a lot of these boots that were fans of the Predator Ace line. So they like the new Preds, old school guys don't however. So what should Adidas do? Kind of what Nike has done with the Nike Tiempo line, which obviously has kind of the more modern technology with the kangaroo leather styling. And then they introduced the Nike Premier, which we're now on the Nike Premier 2. I have it right here. These retail for $110. It still features kangaroo leather like you'll find on the Tiempo Legend, but obviously with a lot more simple, older technologies. So why wouldn't Adidas want to have their own Nike Premier? They kind of have it right now with the Copa Mundial and the Gloro line, but why not have it for the Predator? You have a shoe, a line of shoes, with so much history behind it and such a huge following, wouldn't it just make sense to create a very simple, modernized, older style Predator with the kangaroo leather, give the rubber elements, you can do a fold over flap tongue, you can make the shoe inexpensive to actually manufacture, sell it at a lower price, and guess what? You're gonna get that audience of people that really, really like the old school Predators that aren't buying from the brand anymore because you don't offer that type of product also worth noting that that's a style of shoe that has more or less gone away over the last several years. So if you were to introduce a product like that, not only would you attract those older Predator fans, you'd attract the T90 fans, you'd attract the Mizuno Wave Ignitus fans, you'd attract pretty much all the people that want that older style leather shoe with the rubberized striking element that you can't buy anymore. So if you had the only one on the market, I really don't see how it couldn't sell if again, they put it as a reasonable price. I'm not saying do an entire line, just do it like the Nike Premier, where it's one top end model between 100 and 130 bucks. I think that would sell extremely well. Boost replacement insoles, and we technically have this right now in the form of the insoles that come in the Predator 18 Plus. We also had it with the A17 Plus Pure Control. And in all honesty, this particular Boost insole, given how thin it is, essentially just one thin layer of Boost material, it feels like regular foam. So I'm not saying produce this exact insole and sell it as replacement insoles, but if they were to produce a Boost insole anywhere between $20 and $40, if it was just a little bit better than this, I think people would buy that like crazy, regardless of whether or not they are wearing Adidas boots. Again, so many people have these Ultra Boost sneakers, so many people have these Boost sneakers in general from the Adidas brand, and most people that have them pretty much tend to agree that it's the most comfortable foam or cushioning setup from any brand right now. So if they could get that same technology, that same type of sensation from an insole, even if it's not gonna feel the same, cause it won't if you make it super thin, they're still gonna buy it because there is a legit demand for replacement insoles in modern day soccer cleats. Nobody really makes anything inexpensive that's specifically made for this type of application. So if they were to do it with the Boost Tech, people would go absolutely insane and it would sell, again, I think extremely well. Change up the stud patterns. Now this is something that I think is more of a personal thing. I'm not sure if this is entirely necessary because there seems to be plenty of people that are still really happy with this stud pattern that we have within the Adidas brand, which by the way, was originally introduced in 2010. It is now eight years later. And aside from a couple of models that changed it up, mainly the Ace 15.1, Everything from the Adidas brand 
has featured this exact layout for a stud pattern with very minor variation in the shape of the studs. And yes, that minor variation does make for slight performance differences, but for the most part, if you've worn an Adidas boot in the last eight years, you kind of have an idea of what the stud pattern is going to feel like, which again, not a bad thing. These are FGAG. I think that's very important for the Adidas brand, especially in 2018, as prevalent as artificial grass is. But I am pretty confident in saying that if they were to reintroduce this older style bladed stud pattern, or at least something along these lines, people would get super, super excited about it because I really feel like stud patterns from the Adidas brand have been overlooked. Yes, it was great when they introduced it in 2010, but you have to have some change to maintain some level of interest. I know for me personally, if, if I was in today's current boot market, had I bought an Adidas shoe last year and then an Adidas shoe this year, next year, if they didn't change the stud pattern, it's not something that I would continue to buy. I would probably look elsewhere for something a little bit different because people are curious. They want to try new things. So when the stud pattern always stays the same, it's hard to maintain that interest or at least loyalty to the brand because yes, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I completely understand that. But at the same time, curiosity is also what sells shoes. So if you come out with a stud pattern that's different than what you had before, especially if it's a new generation of the same line, people are gonna be curious about it and they're more likely to buy it if they're curious on trying out what's new. If you never change it, nothing's ever new. So not something that I think needs to happen 100%, but I'd like to see it happen given that there's been no change for eight years now. Anyways, guys, those are my ideas for new Adidas products that probably won't ever exist. But if Adidas is watching and they do decide to use some of these ideas, please cut me in. That would be great. Other than that, let me know what you guys think of these products. Would you buy them? Would you not buy them? Do you have any questions regarding these non-existent products for me? I'll try my best to answer those down below in the comments as well. And let me know if you guys like this to turn into a series on the channel, because I definitely have a lot of ideas for all kinds of different brands. So if it's something you'd like to see more of, please just let me know and I can definitely make that happen. Other than that, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.